true global security demands a response to public health challenges and their underlying causes. In today's world, new infectious diseases can spread rapidly across the globe. Misinformation causes panic. Panic measures disrupt society and damage the economy. In September 2014, the United Nations declared the Ebola outbreak in West Africa a threat to international peace and security. Two months later, violent clashes between security forces and residents erupted in Monrovia after Liberia's biggest slum was quarantined. The government said that the quarantine, later abandoned as a mistake, was imposed for both health and security reasons. Residents had already stormed an Ebola holding center, and the government was worried about the risk of political instability. Pandemic influenza has terrorized humanity for centuries. The 1918 Spanish flu pandemic killed at least three times as many people as World War I. The risk of another deadly flu pandemic is at the center of current efforts to strengthen global health security. Our ability to travel farther and faster in the modern world also heightens the spread of infectious disease. We feel that the global zusammenrücken, the global zusammenwachsen, uns alle abhängig macht davon, dass die Gesundheit des einen auch die Gesundheit des anderen ist. Das heißt, die Leistungsfähigkeit eines Gesundheitssystems auf der Welt entscheidet über die Gesundheit anderer Länder, genauso wie über Sicherheit und Stabilität. Das heißt, nationale Eigenverantwortung und globale Mitverantwortung sind zwei Seiten ein und derselben Medaille. In 2003, the global dissemination of SARS happened after just 10 people became infected. They all boarded flights before falling ill and caused outbreaks in several countries. In the end, the virus infected 8,098 people, killed 774, and cost the world economy close to 40 billion US dollars. Also high on the political agenda for strengthening health security is antimicrobial resistance. It threatens to push us into a post-antibiotic era where common infections could become untreatable, routine surgeries life-threatening, and a bioterrorism attack more difficult to respond to. The risks are many and complex, and no country is safe. But successes have been achieved. The eradication of smallpox in 1980 was a phenomenal achievement that has saved millions of lives and significantly reduced the threat from a global health pandemic. We're so close to wiping out polio. We just need one last push to finish the job by vaccinating children in both Pakistan and Afghanistan. But how well prepared are we for the next crisis? And what might the impact be on a society or political system if a highly transmissible, highly deadly epidemic occurred? One where emergency workers and key responders are equally affected? And where the ability to treat the complications of the disease is dropping because antibiotics are failing? Is it reasonable to imagine that such a situation could lead to a major breakdown in law and order? Every country needs strong systems to detect, report, and respond to outbreaks. We need engagement by all actors, including the security sector. By fostering better public health, we will boost our common security. Thank you. Thank you, Shane.